Well, boys and girls, it looks like the hammer has fallen. My father is officially dead. While his remains were cremated about a week ago, we are here in his uh, parents' hometown to our the memorial service. As I stated in the Bad Goddess cartoons, uh, my father had, was in his 60s. He had just recently retired and he had gone out to the Bahamas to celebrate. It wasn't his first time there. On his second day, in the middle of uh, star playing with his second wife, Nancy, he suffered a heart attack so big that they couldn't save him while if he were standing in the middle of a hospital. This was happening just as he was getting on the boat. They got him on the boat, they noticed he wasn't breathing and he had turned blue. There's nothing they could do for him. Kept dry case. However, there were a couple of disturbing coincidences related to it. He died on June 24th, which is the same day that my mother Debbie's first husband, Freddie, died, June 24th, less than a month after he visited the Bahamas. That's coincidence number one. Coincidence number two is that... After we found, while this was happening, about an hour after he died and we got the phone call, I was editing a scene on a tropical island in the Bad Goddess cartoons, uh, Certain Magical Pimp Decks, and um, the scene where the characters wake up on the PlayStation 2 island. So about an hour, I make that scene about an hour later, my mother gets the phone call about it, tells me to sit down. And that alone freaked me out, that little clairvoyant connection. That happens to people sometimes. They just have this little psychic moment when a relative of theirs dies. You don't have to be psychic to feel that moment. It happens to quite a few people. I didn't go over to my ex-wife Angela's apartment to tell her the news. And at first she thinks I'm joking. She breaks down crying almost immediately. And... And then she reveals that I had completely forgotten it was the one day after the one year anniversary that our nephew Dylan Gutierrez commits suicide, which I memorialized in the cartoon show. That's three coincidences. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but ever since I've been making that damn cartoon show, it's been surrounded by weird cases of coincidence and serendipity. And it's about the goddesses of fate that are based on three real goddesses. Or supposedly real, and they're supposed to be mythology. But something's behind them. Something associates themselves with that goddesses. And I can't help but feel like it's plaguing me. Anyways. This feels like the last straw right here. I don't know how to feel about it, but, you know, that's, that's what witchcraft is. You perform a spell or something, and then the effect happens, and it feels like a coincidence, a big, freaky, serendipitous coincidence, like you're thinking of a song, and then you turn on the radio, and the song's playing, that kind of coincidence, only in this case, it wasn't a song on the radio. It was the death of my father. But no matter what happened or no matter what it was, he was old. He had to go eventually, one of these days. And you can't really complain about the way that he went out. Out of all the horrible, fucked up ways a person can die, he went out happily celebrating his hut his retirement and swimming in the Bahamas rather than shitting himself homeless under a bridge like a lot of Americans today. Still. Sad to see him go. You know, 
this wasn't supposed to be about my father. Originally, this documentary was supposed to be about my grandfather, Roy. We were supposed to come down here for the weekend. And something happened there, just a case of bad luck. My kid came down with um, lice in her hair or something, and they refused to take her in a car because he feared it would be contagious or something. And I got angry at him for it. And it was like, I felt like he was treating us like a couple of plague victims. But, said a few harsh words, but they weren't the last words I said to him. We forgave each other and got over it, but that prevented me from doing that trip. And it felt like my first attempt to get something made fell through. So, then I asked uh, a spiritualist associated with Zombie Life TV. I told them about all the coincidences on the Bad Goddess TV show and asked him to look through it, see if there was anything I missed or odd to him. And uh, Renero Cohn said the third episode, Misrepresentations of Our Gods Through the Media, had a spiritual energy off of it, of that of a god, during the scenes where Verdandi shows up and starts bitching about the how she really felt about the show. Somehow I had accidentally invoked those spirits in that episode. And the strangest part was he said that they were amused. And I used my own sick and twisted sense of humor to convey how they really felt about the Oh My God a series. But nonetheless, I feel like by making that show, I accidentally drew their attention. And it's just been plaguing me ever since. Did it ever have anything to do with the death of my father? I don't suppose I'll ever know. But it sits there in my mind. It makes me wonder. So, after hearing that news, we were going to go do a spiritual medium to contact those spirits. It was going to be in a little labyrinth park behind the hospital. The day I went down there, almost immediately, I drove there like a day before to do some test shots. Right before I almost got there, I get a phone call, a last minute phone call from my grandmother saying she had an appointment to go to, as if it was trying to stop me. I said it was too late to go, so I kept going. And then the minute I got to the damn hospital, I got another phone call from my wife, Angela, out of the blue, saying that she was having surgery, coincidentally, at that very same hospital the day after I was going to shoot. They were going to put her under anesthesia. And the fact that all this was happening as I was about to shoot a movie where I was going to attempt to contact those spirits, it felt like they were threatening me, like if I had gone through with the shoot, she wasn't going to wake up from the surgery. And then I received an email with no real warning from uh, Renier O'Cone. Renier O'Cone was spooked as hell and backed out of it. The only thing that this makes me think of is in the cartoon show, there was this thing called The System Force in the very first episodes. It caused these weird random acts of fate to prevent people from doing things. And it felt exactly like that, except in a threatening manner. Am I crazy for noticing this connection? So, I ended up doing the damn bloat myself. If that's video recorded, I did a very lousy job of it. Next morning I wake up, I get a phone call from Robert Cheney to shoot that high school documentary, Last Voyage of Linear Vikings, at the last minute. And I arrived there and suddenly I realized that the school mascot was the fucking Vikings. I'm like, holy shit. Well, that shoot went down without a hitch. And I thought, perhaps this was the change of my luck. Perhaps things were going to get better. And then 
then I was in a movie, Fatal Instinct, uh, that Carl Reiner spoof at Alamo Draft House. I started getting text messages from the producer. And I ended up in an argument over changing the titles, and the movie got removed from release for a month. It was as if the spirits I attempted to contact it were flipping me the fuck off for my lame ass attempt to make amends. Well, I didn't listen. I continued forward. And now the second time they flipped me off was when my father died. Making the TV show. Am I crazy for noticing that connection? Is it just me associating two thing, random things together? I don't know. But the rest of the movie isn't about this. I was just getting this off my chest. The rest of this movie is about my father and my family. And uh, it's at the house that I would spend my summers with and my Christmas winters with my grandparents out on the lake and I've searched for other houses just like it out on the lake but I couldn't find them this is one of a kind he got a great deal on the land and built the house there himself you know my grandfather's a self-made man so anyways we're about to leave I hope you enjoy this show and dad I love you Okay. Well, it's been a while since I've seen my dog. I know. It has to be too, so. Okay. Hello. Say hello, Jen. Daddy's cousin. Hello, hello. How are you? Oh, pretty good. Good. Never met you before. It's, we have, but it's, you were real little. Oh, well, I imagine so. So. Oh. I can tell you your dad's son. Yeah. <laughs> Come on in. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, how well did you know my father, if any at all? Well, we knew each other more growing up, but as we got older, we weren't around each other as much. But You, you knew just, each other growing up, so around, I don't know, what decade were y'all growing up? <laughs> Long time ago. In the 60s. In the 60s, huh? Uh-huh, 60s. I graduated in 76, so... Now, I believe he grew up... He grew up in a different town here before his parents moved to this place, right? Right, right. Uh, okay, what town was that? They lived over in... I think it was considered Haltom City. Beverly. Hello, we Beverly. haven't um, seen each other since Aunt Virginia passed. Yeah. So, but it's good to see you again. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, continue. Oh, no, it's just... They grew up in Haltom City. We grew up in North Richland Hills and Faye and Roy or Virginia, I always called her Faye, are my godparents. So anyway, we would see each other quite often when we were younger in family reunions and stuff like that. Do you have any interesting childhood stories to tell? We can think of, come on, mm. dig deep here. <laughs> I was pretty young. I was the youngest of all of this them. Is so. This is this is not an insensitive moment filming the funeral gathering. This is no, one understand. of the few times that we have the entire family 
here in one place right. to reflect on someone. It sucks that somebody had to die to do it, but I yeah. think that's worth capturing anyways. Yeah. That's this is a very nice family. Yeah, that's what happens, unfortunately. So, and there's now I just remember your dad was always extremely nice to me. He was just, he was just a very special guy. My dad was nice to everybody. He was just happy-go-lucky. Yeah. Know? Yeah. He didn't, yeah. didn't have a mean bone in his body. The irony was he was always telling me to watch out for my health problems and what I eat. Mm-hmm. And now you really need to. <laughs> Pay attention to it. Uh, this is not a joke. I suffered so much anxiety over this that uh, when I was eating dinner one night, I, I put gravy on my food, and I suddenly felt the worst case of chest indigestion ever. Like, it mm -hmm. held strong for a minute, felt my heart racing, and then I thought, oh my God, this is it. The anxiety's so bad, I'm going to die like my father. Yeah. And then I, I, thankfully, it went away, but it got me seriously thinking about my health issues. Yeah. It also seriously got me working on my little animated movies a little more than I should have. Like, I got to get this out here before I die, you know? Yeah. So, so. Well, here's somebody I know is wanting to see. Hello, you. Grandfather. Hi. How are you? Hi. This is Roy Neese, the head of the family. Oh, you getting all on tape, huh? Oh, I'm making a two to and a half, three hour documentary of this. So. <laughs> come tell me about your son, Roy. Uh, Why don't y'all come on the import? Tell me about Danny. Do what? I can hear. Oh, that's right. Um, Roy has a little problem hearing. He has a hearing aid, but we'll work with him on this. <laughs> Y'all want to go in and sit down where it's cool? Oh. Is, that, is that okay? I'm go yes. Okay. Back for a minute. Okay. I have a funny story to tell in this room. So, my grandparents, they like their golfers, you know. I mean, never thought anything of it. Never, I never thought of them as rich or anything as a child. It just doesn't occur to me like that. So, basically, one day I, I go out with my grandmother to the golf course, and she has her own golf cart and everything. And she let me drive it, which is a big thrill for a kid. Oh, boy, we get to drive the golf cart. So, anyways... One day she says, you can go on up ahead, and because she's taking a long time. Well, I took, you give some a kid a rope, he will take a mile. I drove all, I didn't just drive ahead, I drove all the way back to the center, and she had to walk across a traffic street, and she had to walk all the way home. And when she got there, she punished me by locking me in this room and taking away the VCR, I was not allowed to leave this room except for bathroom breaks. So, yeah. Oh, here's a photo of her as a child right here. You can see her get me out of the shot. Now, there's an interesting story. My grandmother passed away in the room across the hall over here. Let's... I believe she was on that bed. And afterwards... Roy claimed that he could feel her spiritual presence in the house, constantly watching him, and he was so empathetic in his belief, so into it, that my entire family believed him. My wife, uh, she comes from an Indian family that has this sort of sixth sense about ghosts. She can feel my grandmother here too. I don't think my grandmother passed over. I think she stayed here with Roy. Now. That doesn't mean I want the ghost hunters to come here and try to do anything. Please leave my grandmother in peace. But, uh, pirate. Let's look at some photos. This is a total fake. Okay. Mm. Here, this is a fun thing that they built to the house. Check this shit out. Laundry hamper. Where does it go? I will show you where it goes. Right in there. Nice design, right? Yeah. 
I have fond memories of this kitchen. I'd be so bored. I had a fond memory of a cereal cabinet. Read it for the read it for the cereal. Now here's something creepy. You want to check this out? This was a wedding anniversary certificate. It takes place at sea in Norway. Viking tradition. That's a weird another connection. But here's the part that's creepy. Check the date. That is the birthday of my wife Angela. Another coincidence. Take a pic of my grandmother. Life is full of coincidences and connections. Here we have pop thingy. Liquor cabinet. Nice liquor cabinet. Now we can come down and see you and spend time and go sailing. Yeah, we're starting planning things. Yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. 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 Yep. Oh, you are totally. Oh, you're totally gonna ruin my movie. Things from the garden, garden in the valley, valley of the jolly green giant. Oh. <laughs> Sir, I used to have fun as a kid running up and down this little hall here. My grandfather wasn't much for children, but we did start to get along when we got older. I got older. You know, some people just are kid people, some people are not. Roy was more business oriented. Now he's sort of leisurely. Remember many fond memories of the cat going in and out of the sliding door. That cat, gray haired cat, lucky. If I could find a picture of him, I'll show you later. He reportedly ran off and he was an indoor outdoor cat and he escaped one night. He didn't really escape, they let him out, but there were coyotes in the area that were killing off animals and he never came home one night so they suspect he was killed by the coyotes. These are not the best steps to walk down. Now, there was once an incident where the flooding down here got so bad that it went all the way up to the roof of that boathouse. God forbid what Roy does when the boat that happens and the boats get overwalked. Whoa! Told you these things are old and they're not safe. Put my life at risk for you people. Hope you enjoy this. Down the steps we go. Yeah. This would make a great location for a movie. But all you horror film people can go screw yourselves, because this one's mine. Boy, 
but often scared the living shit out of me as a kid by driving a golf cart down this hill at top speed. Like the roller coaster from hell. I don't know if he has the golf cart anymore. A lot of trees are missing here. That tree looks like it was chopped up, but back in the day, we used to have a little port swing. Unfortunately, the thing broke. In fact, now that I think about it, I think it was my fat ass that broke it. So, the boathouse area. Sometimes the lake's up, sometimes the lake's down. Luckily for us, the lake's up tonight, today. Looks very pretty. See, when the lake's down, that little walkway there goes down with it and it becomes dangerous to get onto the docks. And my grandfather, he uh, used to take us out on boats all the time, but he's at an age where it's not really safe for him to do it by himself. The last time that me and Angela went out with him, he was uh, trying to impress us and uh, the boat accidentally ran into the side of a dock. But anyways, um, we stopped asking him to do that afterwards. He goes out when he has a friend supervising him. To be perfectly honest, I'm kind of worried when did I know that he drives by himself still. Because I've seen how he drives. It's very wobbly and on and off the road. He does it at night too, you know. My father, had he lived, was about to move down here to help him be his live-in assistant. Just like I was for my grandmother, Naomi. Well, this is a good thing. I had more than a few boats in here. Yep. Let's see if I can get a good shot. Good old fashioned boat house. Shame. I can film the video. But I can't take the awkward smell with me. This house has a used to always have a smell of roasted coffee in the morning, mostly for my grandmother. Thankfully, they weren't smokers. At least I don't think they were. Not around me. I mean, if they were, I would smell in the house, wouldn't I? This is a little secret area that not a lot of people know about. Well, nobody knows about it. Nobody fucking lives here, but um, except the family members. But still. Go out to the side of the house here. Oh, look, they removed it, but you can see the poles for it. There used to be a dock right here. In fact, I think the dock was moved inside the boathouse. You just saw it earlier, but that was where my father's boat was. So, anyways, as stated earlier, my father did not grow up in this house. His parents moved here later my uh, grandfather reported ran a factory they gave jobs to a lot of people some of the things he made he manufactured wheels for skateboards unfortunately these were not the good skateboards that we have today these were the ultra shitty 1960s skateboards that were a safety hazard I broke my arm on one of them and my father my father kept one of them for nostalgia reasons and what happened was I took it out riding on the sidewalk first little crack in the sidewalk it hit it stops I fall down and break my arm my father immediately took a power saw to it and cut it in half crappy orange skateboard but anyways my father gave pe my grandfather gave those people their jobs there are a few stories to tell about that place for example so one time, I believe, um, he uh, hired a few illegal immigrants to work for him. And when they realized what a good job they, they had there, they started spreading rumors around his factory that he was going to fire 
all of his close friends and workers to replace them because for cheaper labor all of grandfather's friends got offended and immediately band together like a strike group it walked out at once and that could have destroyed him but unlike most of the EOs working today my grandfather he had humility he went to the houses of every single one of his workers got down on his knees and apologized and begged them to forgiveness after firing the two illegal immigrant workers and they all came back to work for him now Donald Trump might think the point of the story is, well, this is why we don't need illegal immigrants. No, that's not the fucking point of the story. The point of the story is humility. What CEO working today would go to the house of every one of his employees and apologize on bended knee? I can't think of any. So, unfortunately, my grandfather got swindled out of his company when he tried to sell it. He thought he was making a good trade-off. Unfortunately, the man that he sold it to re intentionally ran the company into the ground and filed for bankruptcy. But it's the funniest thing because after the bastard did it, they discovered that a million dollars went missing from the uh, petty cash or not petty cash, just somewhere in the company. It just disappeared. The guy took it covered his tracks, filed for bankruptcy, and because the judge made a judgment, there was nothing they could do about it. So, my grandfather built a factory that worked on family values, and he was cheated at it by a guy for his money. Fucking scumbags. But he continued to live his life with his wife, Virginia. He has a couple of car washes. We'll go to those later. I believe the car washes were owned by Jerry and Jim now. I guess now it's Jerry. But, you know, this is my childhood. I mean, my childhood was in uh, Austin, but we came here every holiday, every summer for the 20 years of my parents' marriage. And the minute my parents' first marriage ended, my first mother, my birth mother, Debbie, stopped coming here for 16 years. My wife, Angela, and I, we came here, but Debbie didn't. This is her first time back here in a long time. She hasn't been a part of this family, really. Wonder how she feels about all that. Not to self interview her later. Well, I believe we've gotten festivities out of the way. That grating didn't always used to be there. I used to hide and play under this thing. End of part one. Start of act two. And cut. Food. <laughs> At least not from me, they don't. <laughs> Do you want anything? What? So, Do you Lindsay. Want anything? Okay. When was the last time you spoke to my father? Yeah, I'm not doing this. You're not doing that? No. We, we it's like okay, sweetie. Friends. I love you. You don't have to. Thank you. Hey Nancy. Hello. This is my father's second wife, Nancy. Hello. How are you? Good. Got any work stories you would like to tell about Jim? Not at this time. <laughs> How about later? You know, yeah. the prosperity. Just yeah. I'll give you a moment to think about it. I got two good ones. Not you really. How do you feel right now? <coughs> <coughs> He's <coughs> taking a little movie huh? of you. He's taking a little movie of oh, you. Yeah. I feel I made a very bad mistake in not putting my father on camera in a home movie. Yeah. Now it's too late. I can't do it. But I can still get you. There he is. Got a hairball? 
Oh, hey, sir, who are you? I'm David. What's your relation to my father? Uh, cousin. Cousin? Yeah, I'm married to James. That was me. Uh, oh, okay, she already told me her back history. <laughs> my wife, Angela. Yeah. It's his first wife, Debbie. Oh. Does anybody have any stories to tell right now? Well, I can say that your dad is my cousin. <laughs> and when we were going, I'm Jennifer. Jennifer. Suzanne Harwell Payne. My mother, Lillian, was Mary was the uh, sister of Danny's mom, Virginia. Go away, dog. And. <laughs> And that pathetic, sorry. Um, and we grew up together with Danny and Sherry, my sister Beverly and I, and our cousins Wanda and Jan always playing together. And Wanda and Jerry and I were always a trio. And cousin Danny and Jan and Beverly were always a trio. And we were, whatever games we were playing, we were teams against each other. And your dad n never, ever complained that he was had to play with the two youngest of the group and they often won well that's because we were terrific absolutely you were and he also yeah, introduced me complaint. he also he introduced me to um, folk music the very first piece of folk music i ever heard was peter paul and mary's where have all the flower gone where have all the flowers gone and he played it for me when he discovered folk music well coincidentally on that note you know Back in the 60s, I believe Roy used to and Virginia used to think the Beatles were trash because they were part of the hippie movement. Uh -huh. And my father would repeatedly tell me the story that how he turned them around on the Beatles was he sh showed uh, Roy the song Yellow Submarine. And Roy said, you know, there's nothing wrong with this song. It's a delightful little song. Yeah. Yep. And a yellow submarine. Absolutely. So, and we used to listen to the Beatles a lot when we were kids. So, and do the twist absolutely. And do the Jan in their living room. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh, I have the stereotypical idea of that tiny ass TV with a small black and white screen. These kids doing the twist in front of it. Actually, yeah. no, it was to, to an album on, the, on a stereo unit in their bedroom. But what, um, 19, is it 1968 that we landed on the moon? Mm -hmm. And we were with, we were here at Uncle Roy's house. Uh, and he was taking photos of the landing. He was taking photos of the TV screen. So we were all together for that very important event in our history. Not so. that I believe in this, but there are some people out that think the moon landing was fake. I've heard that, yes, but I don't believe that. You don't believe that, huh? <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Yeah, I so, don't believe it there's either. Always yeah. There's always conspiracy theories. Absolutely. Lots but of conspiracy theories. We know it happened. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know you happen. You know it happened because the idiot box told you. <laughs> and that's a problem today. I guess was TV more dependable back then? They still had propaganda. Yes, but TV not as bad as TV, it was today. TV was for entertainment purposes, and everything was clean and healthy and nice. And, and now and, it's and much more entertaining than what's offered now. Yeah, mm -hmm. now it's just pure, unadulterated mind control, like the John Carpenter movie, They Live. Yeah. Oh. Smile. <laughs> Come on, I gotta take up some time on the tape. So, you think they might let me film the pastor speaking at the funeral? I don't think that would be a good idea. Why? How often do people get to film I a funeral? I think it would be a problem. I would check with, saying, I like, would ask, if we can go there as a group and watch him say it, then we I would put ask it on video. him beforehand to make sure I am sure going to ask him beforehand. With it. Yeah. I don't see why, because I mean, Dick filmed our daddy's funeral. Our it's, mama's funeral. It's not about the sadness yeah. that he died, because that passes. This is a celebration It's about of his the life. people speaking of remembrance of his life, and that is what this documentary is about. Absolutely. It's this is a celebration of a yeah. really great guy. Jim was loving and caring. I have a eulogy that was sent to me. Do you have any personal stories to say about him? Yeah. Yeah. This is my wife, Angela. We were married for 15 years. 
Jared was a loving, caring dad, grandpa, father-in-law to Ke He always to helped Kevin us do Lindsay our taxes every year. I. If he didn't make us buy the software, he lets mooch off his software. He was always understanding. He understands us. He was very patient with us. Most best part is, you know, I have a problem now, and I think, okay, who do I go to? Well, my dad isn't here to tell me how to deal with his death, you know? I don't know what to say about that. You want to send it to one of us to put on our tablet where it would be bigger to read? I don't know. Can you do it? It doesn't look like it has a uh, screen glare, screen glare. Uh. Don't laugh, but when I was a kid, my parents would sleep in the main bedroom. Everything else was full. I would sleep on this couch. In fact, I still kind of sleep on this couch when I come here. And because I sleep on a couch, I lie awake at night. It's comfy, but I wrote the, several of the fan fiction stories for a bad goddess on this couch. That's how that got started. But enough about that. I think this is my cousin, either Sarah or Rachel. I can't remember which, it's been so long. My grandparents like these silly little games. Little pu wood puzzle games. What's we got here? Photo album. Jerry and uh -huh. Randy. Jim, but they knew him as Danny. Oh, damn, he has nothing like himself in that corner. Yeah, it's my childhood. Look, I'm even in the photo, back when I was skinny. You know, depression from bipolar disorder can make you gain weight. Or maybe it just makes you eat from sadness. Definitely did a number on me. That's the cat I was talking about earlier, the one that got eaten by the coyotes. He had many different names. Laddie, Lucky, Kitty. No more no, <laughs> oh, funny you should mention that. Tell us about Roy's Greyhounds. Some friends uh, found this little dog. When I was a kid, we had golden retrievers, and then older, in the older later years, he kept retired racing greyhounds as pets. He used to race greyhounds at the track for money, and uh, when they came down with health problems, he would retire them or bring them home as pets. Are you wanting to ride over with us? No, I'll drive. Okay. I'll get the All right. Because I was thinking, you know, if you want to ride with us, but you're, you're going to keep pushing her, okay? Yeah, she can always ride. Anyone well, follow photo, us maybe. over? Or... I'm going to follow y'all. Okay. Well, that's this is your first time. Yeah. There was a buzz coming from earlier. Oh, it's buzz. Okay. Stop sign. Make a left. We turn the road. Road forks. Don't take boat club. Go to the right and take the first ride. Well, now we know where they both went. Jerry was telling us last night. I'm going. Yeah. So many pictures of the cat. But we have Uncle Roy with us, so he knows where he's going. Who is this handsome devil? You guys ready? Are you ready, Uncle Roy? I'm ready. All right, then. Sarah and Rachel. Um, yeah, just make sure the dog stays in. Okay. Wait, are we leaving? 
Uh, we are. I don't think you guys are going yet, are you? It's up to you. You just go where you want. You ready when um, we are? Be bringing up the rear. Do you want me to lock the door? Yeah, we lock me. Yeah, you get your key and take it with yeah. you, and she can lock the door behind her. How do I lock the you door? Don't, you don't need key to lock. You just turn. turn. You know where to turn the knob. No. Okay, your patio door locked. I'll go see. It's funeral concession time. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the show is about to begin. Are you ready for that last goodbye, honey? They changed it to. It's okay. She's got his ashes over her fireplace when we get home. Yeah. Oh, really? The best way to end the shot. On a ticking clock. The hour is at hand. Yeah. I'm waiting on Cheryl. Okay. I don't know. You might want to go. Talk. 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 Okay, we'll wait. Talk. All right. Talk. Let's, let's give one. Talk. 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 No, we'll just close the outside. Well, it's the same key as this. Go ahead, I'll be out. We need to make sure the dance, you know, to the... Yeah, to pull the words out of your mouth. He just retired. Well, and I like your theory. At least he died doing what he enjoyed, but it's just, to me, it was an untimely death. Yeah. Huh? Do you have any fond stories about your marriage? At all? Tell them right now. I'll think about it. Okay. We'll talk later, Brian. Oh, okay. Oh. It's a heavenly day today, isn't it? to my car. Wow. We got that on camera. That's Scar!
my father's uh, first wife, Debbie, that you met earlier. They met at a Halloween party for the first time. He was there as the ghost of Darth Vader. My mother was there with her friend, dressed as Tweedledee and Tweedledum. I recall seeing the photo as them as a kid. They met at a Halloween party. They were married by St. Patrick's Day. The test uh, told him that they, she was the one. They went out camping to Big Bend together for about a week with no showers or anything. Just got smelly as hell. Then on the way back, they got pulled over by a cop and ticketed and got into an argument like a married couple should, you know. And that was it that sparked it off. My mother never disliked my father. Even after they broke up, she thought of him as a friend. The issues that she had were the anger issues and the fact that he was more interested in his hobbies and distracted in his work and his hobbies than her. My father didn't live on the land, his heart belonged to the lake and there's only so many times that you can sail around Lake Travis before it gets boring to Debbie. So his life was that boat on the lake, his inventions that never quite took off though he certainly tried and on building a boat that never really came to be he built his boat all right but it wasn't a big sailboat or anything it was a tiny little dinghy that doesn't really float it sits in the backyard at his house really yeah. she didn't want to bring it up in front of nancy or ever so i'm paraphrasing it for her Here's something that people here don't really want to speak about. The reason we're having the service at this church over here is to appease the religious side of the family. The irony is that my father was an atheist. No, I don't mean to be an asshole to bring this up, you know. We're not going to get into a big religious discussion. Well, maybe a little. Some people think atheists go to hell, but I would point out to those people immediately in Dante's Inferno that the circle of hell that atheists went to was nothing but a black void of nothingness of sleep and you know that's kind of what they buy into to begin with so it's not really a punishment now is it my mother doesn't believe that though she believes that when we all died that we just go back fade our spirits just fade back into the universe we become atoms everything's atoms you know we all have our religious beliefs. Me personally, I feel like my father is watching over me and talking into my ears as I do things sometimes. Seems like I'm getting more attention from him now after he's gone than when he was still here. So maybe my father, grandfather isn't so crazy about Virginia now, is he? I think it's time we go inside. Hmm. This is this way. Do you have any stories you'd like to say about my father? Oh, uh, really good, 
really funny guy. Well, everybody says that. Do you have anything that differentiates it from that? Particular story or genius side? No, I don't. I guess I don't have any particular uh, stories about him. Just you know, always a good guy. Take out on a boat, have a couple of drinks with. It's always very sociable. Okay. Thanks for being in the documentary. Okay. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm Okay. Hello. And you are you, sir? I'm Richard Nice. Oh, I'm the one I talk to. You're the one I talk to online. Right. I'm Roy's nephew. And. Danny, as we call him, Tim's cousin. My dad here is Richard, is, is uh, Bernie Nice. He's Roy's brother. How do you do? Nice to meet you, Bernie. This is Kevin. Kevin? Oh, okay. This is Danny's son. Yeah, I, I think I met you a long time ago. I'm also in the video work. I am shooting a documentary about my father. So. Good. Mm -hmm. This man here, he's been sort of the spearhead of getting us all together for this. Trying Thank you, I appreciate that. You're welcome. Yeah. Trying to keep everybody informed. Yeah. No, oh, I'm not going in just yet. I'm just looking around. So, you're with the church? Uh, well, yes. Oh, cool. Pardon? Oh, nothing. I, I'm shooting a little documentary about my father. Brother Jerry. Hello, Jerry. You doing okay today? Yeah. You coping? I can see the pain on your face. No. Oh, I'll leave you to your own. Thank you. It's like trying to do shift changes. Uh, thank you. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, he's from Pennsylvania, but he got recently just got a job. He's courteous. Murdered. We had two men in the tag and one of the most big guys in the tag. Was that watermelon? Yes. My name's Sally. Can I have one? Yes, sir. Oh, cool, cool, cool. I want one. Put it in my hand. Oh, that's right. My sister-in-law is Cheryl. Oh, that's so funny. He fills an S or a C. With a C. So she. Okay. That's the cool way to smell it. What are you doing? Doing that. Shooting a documentary. Documentary, yeah. Just kind of having a. Play-by-play play of what's happening here. Some people shoot home movies. I shoot feature-length documentaries. Mm. Oh, man. And they get listed on IMDb. Oh, yeah. I, get to I think my father would have liked to know that I made something about him, even if it was his final moments. Mm. Raiding the vanilla wafers. I want to do it creatively, but I just don't know how to do it. 
so we'll just experiment. So it's care and dedication to the yes. dessert. Yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm very dedicated That's to the, uh, banana pudding. That's the embellishments you have to have. Yes. Stock room of a church. We believe customers. Stereophonics, it grows high. The chorus provided under the ground of putrid sound. Guys, I left it and I drifted. A big bathroom box stuck in the hot rocks. It's in their flow and it's in their flow. And don't believe me that the scenery could be a cold blooded killer. It's gonna blow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Volcano. Debbie's first husband, uh, Freddie, died. And they gave his funeral. She felt that, you know, there was no emotional connection in between him and the church people there. The pastor was just a married him and buried him kind of guy. She wonders if the same connection is here. Do the people here ever, have they ever truly known my father? We will solve the mystery today. Well, isn't that nice? <sighs> yeah, that's the man I know of. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Naughty writing the preschool. You know I don't have permission to shoot this, right? I just came in here and did it. Miss Silly's class. I'm Andrew. I'm uh, what is it? Uh, aunt Nancy's aunt. Aunt uh, Nancy's my aunt. Uh, oh, I'm her nephew. Oh, okay. You're Jean, related through Nancy. Yeah. Um, Jean's mom, uh, son. That's uh, Nancy's sister. Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I'm from Pennsylvania. I was down here working. So you came here to support Nancy. Yeah. Yeah, I was about like came from like Big Spring. Did you fly down here? No, I drove. You drove? Yeah. Wow, that makes it even more special. Yeah. It's a real road trip where you think of your inner feelings. Yes, yeah, about a four hour ride, it wasn't too bad. But I had the weekend also, I figured it's not a bad you know, I can get out here alright. Might as well make it out here. Yeah. And you're uh I'm his son, Kevin. Kevin, nice to meet you. Someone looks at this. And I never, I, did, I, I didn't know he had a son, actually. You didn't know the no, uh, gym? No, I didn't. I did, I mean, we're not, be starting not until, in I mean, just a couple minutes if you want to go in and have a seat, not please. That long ago, you know? Oh, it's okay, dude. You know, we there are like distant family members of my family I don't even know exist, you know? <laughs> it just happens. 
and that's the point of this documentary. I'm meeting them all today. There you go. Let's Ready go. To go. It's in? time for the funeral. Okay, okay. The Let's find a the cutting point. The memorial service. Come on. Let's find a cutting point. Pastor would prefer that you not. Okay, okay, okay. I'll cut it. Good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the family, we welcome you to Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church for this service of remembrance and thanksgiving um, for the life of uh, Danny Meese. Uh, our service today is found printed entirely in your bulletin with the section of the hymns, which we found in the hymn in front of you. Um, I do apologize for the uh, temperature here today. Sometimes with the weather being what it is outside, the AC is not able to catch up as much as we'd like. Uh, but we will begin now with our opening hymn, hymn 461. Please note the selected verses. We rise.
name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In holy baptism, Danny was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all of his sin. St. Paul says, Do you not know that all of us who were, have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore again by baptism into death, in order that just as Responsibly. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs to get saints before us, O Lord. My heart is glad to sing to the Lord to the God. Even the sparrow finds a home and swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. At your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Let the song of dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, and whose heart are the highways to Zion. I the Lord, who God, the Father, and may the the glory of the They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O oh, Lord, God, have the Lord, hear my prayer. Give the ear of God, Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in thee. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Danny. And to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Our first reading this afternoon is from the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He make me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading this afternoon comes from Paul's letter to the Romans, 6th chapter. What shall we say then? Are we to continue to sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now, if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, 
he died to sin once for all, but the life he lives, he lives to God. This is the word of the Lord. We rise with the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel this afternoon comes to us from St. Matthew, beginning at the 23rd verse of the 8th chapter. When Jesus got into the boat, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great storm on the sea, so that the boat was being swamped by the waves, but he was asleep. Then they went and woke him, saying, Save us, Lord, we are perishing. And he said to them, Why are you afraid, O you of little faith? Then he rose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. And the men marveled, saying, What sort of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn, Amazing Grace, 744.
Nancy, Debbie, Kevin, Lindsay, Jerry, Randy, Sarah, and Rachel, beloved family and friends of Dan, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, the shock of what happened recently is still really hard for us to accept. Danny had only been retired for just a few weeks and had really just started to live the next great phase of his life. I think when we get to be that age, we all have those sorts of things. We dream of having a rest from our labors and taking it easy and traveling and enjoying time with loved ones and family. But just two weeks ago, rest for Danny came in a way that was not expected. And so now we feel a sense of disappointment about plans and hopes that are unfulfilled. I first got to know Danny some years ago when I started visiting his mother, Virginia, when she was battling some problems with her child. Danny and Nancy would drive up from Austin, and we would find ourselves sometimes sitting in opposite chairs of hospital waiting rooms. And in between updates from the doctors or news from the nurses' station, I remember asking about Danny's life and everything that he was doing in Austin and everything that was going on with him. I guess you could say that, that Danny spends a lot of his time either taking care of or enjoying God's creation. Danny, as most of you probably all know, used to love to sail on Lake Travis. He worked for the Texas National Resource Commission or Conservation Commission doing environmental studies. Seeing to the preservation of what God had made was important to Danny. He certainly understood and valued the skies and the streams and the trees and the lakes in a way that is missing among many people today. And I'm sure that he had a desire to preserve these things for everyone. In his early years, Danny was baptized and confirmed at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Fort Worth. He grew up learning about the fall of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden and how that event introduced sin into the hearts of all people. The fall and sin brought about a brokenness in human relationships with God, and it ushered in a mortality to God's good and perfect creation. No longer would our world be without disease or sickness or death, but now all of us would have our time. Some of us would leave this life later, life, and, and some of us would leave it sooner than we expected or wanted. And of course, there is a frustration, there is an anger with death and the unfairness with which it intrudes into our lives, taking away our loved ones in what feels to be too soon, and leaving family members with that empty space that makes peace hard to find. But death also reminds us of the precious nature of life, that our time here is short and it can be brief, and that our plans may not always come to fulfillment, no matter how careful or diligent we are at making them. In Matthew chapter 6, we hear of Jesus who cares for the birds of the air and the lilies of the field. They cannot care for themselves, but the scriptures assure us that it is God who cares for them. What we might consider to be the smallest and the most insignificant of creatures, God shows that all life has meaning to him. And so if God tends to the flowers, if God tends to the birds, we can have all the confidence that he will certainly tend to all of our needs as well. And he does this through the sending of his Son, Jesus Christ, to assure us that we will have an eternal inheritance with him in heaven. It's hard in this life watching our loved ones be taken away so quickly. We've come to expect a more gradual arrival of death, one that is marked by longer and longer hospital stays and medication lists, one where there is warning and notice so that we can begin to prepare ourselves for what is to come. It was this way for Danny's mother. It's likely this way for many people in your family. As a pastor, I see it come this way for many people in the church. 
but death is not always so predictable. There may be many false bottoms. There may be sudden appearances. And there is difficulty with either encounter. But as hard as this day is, we do have joy today in knowing that Danny is now reunited with his mother and with others whom he loved. His life two weeks ago passed in a very peaceful place. It's likely one that Danny would have chosen if it had been up to him. You know, from what we've all been told, Danny met Jesus there in the waters of Nassau, I'm sure underneath a, a beautiful blue sky, in the afternoon of June the 24th. But you know, if you think about it, this wasn't the first time that Danny had met Jesus in water. Some 67 years earlier, Danny met Jesus in the waters of baptism when Christ claimed him as his own and declared Danny to be his child. Danny died in the water that day too, but a new man was given birth by the Spirit of God and by the love of Christ Jesus, who is Danny's Savior. You know, in Romans, which we read just a few minutes ago, we learn that baptism unites us with the death and with the resurrection of Jesus. And this means that someday our bodies will be raised. Our flesh will be renewed and raised without sin. That which is oftentimes such a burden to us in this earthly life will be raised in glory in the life to come. And on that day, we'll be free from the effects of sin and from the difficulties and the hardness of sickness and all of the disease and the frailty that, that is brought upon us in this creation. Today we feel an empty space in our lives, and we think about the person who once filled it, who brought us joy and laughter and memories. But through Christ we know that he is not gone forever. We will see him again one day, because we believe that God is faithful to his promises. And we trust that God will take us to live with him, in his kingdom. Jesus came to pay for sin, and the scriptures say that all who believe in him have the promise of life everlasting. And so even on days when there are those empty spaces, we can still find reason for joy, because we worship a God of fulfilled promises. And it is those very promises which fill our empty spaces and which replace our sadness today with hope. The life that we live here on earth is not so long, even if we have 90 or 100 years. And eternity is anything but short. And so we do look to that coming age when death will separate us no more. And we thank God in Christ for the new life that Danny now has, as we also hope in this life and in the promises that have been given to us by God and His Son, Jesus Christ. In His name. Amen. All understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord, now and into eternity. Amen. James Danny Meese was born on June the 7th, 1951 in Fort Worth, Texas. To Roy Melvin Neese and Virginia Faye Drew's niece. He was baptized and confirmed at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Fort Worth. He was active in church youth activities, scouting, and enjoyed camping, fishing, and boating with the family. He played saxophone in high school band as well as the marching band at the University of Texas Arlington. At UTA, he earned his Bachelor of Science degree in Chemistry continued his studies at the University of Arkansas, earning his Ph.D. After several jobs, he settled into his career in Austin, Texas, at the Texas Natural Resource Conservation Commission, doing environmental studies. There, he met and married his first wife, Debbie Brand, with whom he had a son, Kevin. In this period, he developed his passion for sailing. He spent many hours sailing in Lake Travis and in the Caribbean. His passion for sailing was shared by his second wife, Nancy England, whom he met in 2006 and married on a beach in St. John in 2009. 
Danny is survived by his father, Roy Neese, wife, Nancy England, former wife, Debbie Brand, son, Kevin Neese, granddaughter, Lindsay Neese, brother, Gerald Neese, and wife, Randy, and their daughter, Sarah and Rachel Neese. Danny enjoyed life and touched me. I invite you now to please rise and join me in the word of prayer. After each of the petitions today, I will conclude each one with the phrase, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to respond, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, into whose keeping we entrust our loved ones, help us to look to you in our time of sorrow, remembering the cloud of faithful witnesses with which we are surrounded. Grant that we may one day share in the joys of those who now rest in your presence, especially our brother Dan. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Well, God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our brother Danny. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your mercy, console us who are saddened. Give us ever the faith to see in death the gate of eternal life so that with confidence we may continue our course on earth until we are reunited with the faithful who have gone before us. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty and most merciful God, in this earthly life we endure sufferings and death before we enter into eternal glory. Grant us grace at all times to remain steadfast in faith to the end of our lives, that we may know the peace and joy of the blessed hope of the resurrection and the glory of the world to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you have called Danny to the knowledge of your Son, Jesus Christ, kept him in the one true faith, and granted him a blessed end. We implore you now, help us by your Spirit to know and lament our sins. Strengthen our faith in him who died for them, that we would evermore praise you in this life and patiently wait for the glorious appearance of the one who is to come. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. All of this we pray through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. blessing this afternoon as we give you thanks for the life of your servant Danny Neese. We pray that you would bless our food, Lord, as we um, gather together today in, in memory of Danny, um, and in thanks to you for the salvation that you have now uh, delivered to him. Bless us, Lord, as we um, 
gather here together today in thanksgiving and fellowship in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. Um, now we have this first table up here. If you'd like to come up and get in line. Um, I have to move this chair. I'm sorry. Yeah, no problem. Can I help anyone else in the family? Does anyone else? So do you want us to bring you Salmon. Here No, 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 Oh, yeah, I was courting him when I was there. Let me share your uh, salmon recipe with uh, David. Because he got to got the last piece and he said it was good. Uh huh. So I don't know what you did, but. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And this guy is, he got a brand new office. And see, my audio officer told you there wasn't anything else that they could do for me. If they've done everything good. And this guy shows me. Okay. So, what's your name, sir? Uh, I'm Zane Baker, and I know uh, Jim or Danny. Uh, through Nancy, his wife. Uh, his wife is my girlfriend's mom. And so uh, I've known Jim about three and a half years. And uh, we've gotten to spend quite a bit of time together. I actually live about one or two nights a week at his house. So, you know, we, we weren't officially roommates, but, you know, we, we certainly cohabitated some. Uh, for the last three and a half years and um, I, I've always found Jim to be a really um, easygoing uh, reasonable guy uh, and um, and I, we've, we've always uh, shared a camaraderie uh, here, here's me and Jim uh, on the night that I was going to tell you about which is um, when we were Kind of getting ready for Christmas, it was those few weeks before Christmas this last year, which would be 2017, and uh, we uh, had a had a little bit of Christmas cheer and started uh, uh, taking out hats out of Chelsea's closet, putting different hats on. So Jim went to his closet and, and pulled out uh, his hats, and uh, one of his hats uh, was. Uh, sort of a cap like this, but it had a blue jean top and it was a, it was a little bit wide with a big button on top and uh, Obviously he had worn it for many many years several decades and uh, it was uh, well worn and um, I kind of realized that Jim and I had the same kind of fashion sense which is kind of an anti-fashion sense uh, and and um, you know in in that uh, 
you know, the, the, the kind of relaxed, I don't care what people think way of uh, wearing clothing uh, somehow boils itself down to its own fashion. And um, I've always uh, worn a cap kind of like this, a, a Greek fisherman style cap. Uh, Jim had a, another hat, which he later mentioned he wanted to be buried in, which was a, a sort of a safari adventurer's hat. Uh, I think kind of cocked up on one side and uh, it had sweat stains and even uh, was threadbare over the, the band on the outside. And uh, so somehow we had this we had this really good connection with our uh, party of, of hats and trading hats and telling the stories of where they've been and uh, you know where our our head was underneath them. Cool. So I got to tell you, in all your years you know Jim. Jim, when he worked for the environmental company, he uh, saw a lot of let's say things going on that they didn't want him to talk about but he loved to tell these conspiracy stories yeah. to uh, all of us I'll tell you mine if you know any uh, that besides this let me know so um basically he worked for this place back before George W Bush was president and he ran things in Texas uh-huh and the company was trying to come up with a way you mean to when Bush W was George W was, he was governor of Texas yes. yeah so the company Jim worked for was trying to find a way to lower pollution, and their math told them, okay, if we lower the speed limit in Houston to 50 miles per hour, that'll do it. Well, right before it uh, was about to be implemented, Jim found a mistake in the math and revealed that, no, that's not going to work at all. But because the mistake was to their benefit and they were getting paid more to go through with this, right. the boss said, don't tell anybody about this. George Bush's people told him, it's okay if it doesn't work or not. We just want it to look like we're doing something Song for and the dance. election. Uh -huh. So, you know, that's my that's one of my stories. You got any? Uh, about the Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, not really. Jim and I, you know, kind of talked about his day at work and stuff, but we never really talked about, you know, the, the nuts and bolts uh, of his job there. Uh, usually when we were spending time together, we were... Uh, you know, having a good time or, or just, you know, passing in the night <laughs> and saying good morning, good night. Uh, but we did go sailing, and so um, uh, even though we didn't talk a lot of environment, we went out into the environment and enjoyed it. Uh, we went on a camping trip very recently and uh, got to hear a lot of music with uh, Jim and Nancy's friends out at the party they call the Spring Fling they have every year. And um, so... Um, so yeah, Jim and I got to uh, hang out there, see some crawdads, and uh, had a great time. Cool. Well, wow. thank you very much. Thank you. No, I, it's a video. We're okay. Well, you can pause. I can screen capture. I can screen capture it off the video if you want to post for a second. That's great. Uh, we got all the outs. Okay. Well, there, there, there's just my back type. So I don't know how young he had to have been. But they still face something because, that way. Because I remember I was standing by my desk when she slapped me, and boy, she really caught me. But I thought, that ain't nothing. Yeah.
little store, and I saw a whole set of six identical balls. Did you get them? I got them for 20 cents a piece. Cool if we can get somebody to play pool on camera. Yeah. Oh, you got beer. No, sorry, I'm not a beer drinker, but I mean, it's more for you. Yeah. Right here. Home again. On the way home, just home again. You want some ice? Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight you are going to witness a miracle, a resurrection from the dead. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it's the return of Surge. <laughs> Can you believe that? That stuff is so obscure that they sell it out in Saginaw. So that's where they've been hiding it all along. That's not a knife, that's a knife. I think okay, crocodile Dundee. <laughs> Nancy will probably have one. You want to shine her box? Thank you, sir. Okay. I don't mind if I do. I've got reinforcements yeah. with that same stripe. Yay. My daughter is drinking her very first surge. This is truly a miracle of God. A kid who was born after the 2000s gets to witness surge. Do it, Lindsay. Show the world your triumph. What does it taste like to you? It tastes like Kool-Aid. It tastes like what? Kool-Aid. That's it. It tastes like Kool-Aid? Yeah, that's literally it. It tastes like Kool-Aid. It's like Kool-Aid and lemonade. Wow. You heard it, folks. You heard it. It tastes like... Yes. Engage in the festivities. You want one, Kevin? No, I have Surge. I'm going to witness the drink. The drink that we used to have in high school. They used to hawk it to us in the soda machines in high school, but then they said no. It was bad for our health to pitch students kid junk machine candy, candy machines. And so they got rid of it. It was a conspiracy to feed us vegetables and shit.
no Cheetos. See, I told you the Cheetos were oh, wow. well. oh. She came over and got the treats first. Oh, they don't have audio. Oh, they're working on that. Oh, they do a that guy named John that was uh, a, a real tall black gentleman? Yeah, I did. Man, he was smart. Like, he was. Everything yeah. I exactly. brought up, he had like 20 things to say, to say about, about it. it. Yeah. And, and they were all just, you know, these facts. And we start talking about different countries. Every country we mentioned, he like knew this long list of facts about every single one. Yeah, he was, he was kind of cool. And he had this uh, very... Uh, like, uh, especially when he was speaking. Yeah, he, you know, he like was... Delivery of his... Uh, definitely sandwiches. a brainy guy. Yeah. Man, that's kind of a conundrum. It is. You might have to do the bridge. Yeah. What's the bridge? I mean, it's just this. That means... What does that mean? I mean, you can uh, put your hand up here so you don't mess up that oh, ball. Like and then... Uh, no. Like that. Okay. You can get down the Show sure. me. Yeah. Here you go. Sorry. So you just say. Right, right. Okay. I can take it. Yeah. Or you can just hit the seven. Just or I can hand. just hit the seven. Maybe I'm gonna and it does, go it's not for touching. the seven. I'm gonna shoot the moon and get the seven in there. <laughs> 
Okay. For sure. Definitely for sure. I mean, it's gonna go in, man. Uh, oh, confidence man. is speaking volumes. Hard, kind of hard for me to keep my distance here. Look at that. Fancy. Woo! Almost. <laughs> during the day and just have to dress up and be crazy summer camp fool in the later evening. No way. Oh no, he scratched. So, is there any penalty for scratching? Or? No, I think we we'll The penalty is I get to put it where I want. Yeah. Okay. You get a shot and you get to put it where you want. So like you dress up and do what? Uh, like just uh, like a summer camp uh, uniform? Yeah. Or? No, no, no. I dress up in medieval clothing, probably oh, more medieval than most people there. Yeah. Wait, medieval, do you work at Sherwood Forest Fair? Yes, I do. Oh, yeah. Right now, we're doing the should... Sherwood Forest summer camp. My buddy uh, Saul Ravencraft works there. I make a lot of movies with him. I like Saul Ravencraft. He's an owl. Yeah. In Sherwood Forest. Yeah, well, someday. Don't worry, the Sherwood Forest Fair is film is coming someday. You know, just a matter of me well, getting a ride down there. Yeah. yeah, I've done several documentaries with Saul, including one about the Museum of the Weird with the full tour on there. Yeah. Yeah. I wore a, I wear like a tunic usually during summer camp that's like made out of linen. Well, so the it's pretty nice and cool. Well, the infamous legend of Fanboy TV is Sherwood Forest Fair had a, had a nice. role on the public access show fan service that I was working on. And it was like one of the best episodes they ever shot. Unfortunately, the hard drive cut off after the first three minutes. So the entire episode is lost. You, the only thing you can see of it is the first three minutes of introductions. Seven to fifteen. Okay. Man, he almost got the one in. <laughs> Which was my plan. <laughs> but not really. You shooting for the eleven? Go for the sucker shot, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go for the sucker punch. Got it. You have now all of this. <laughs> all of this will be yours. <clears throat> oh, scratch! Scratch! Me. Say. Too bad you scratch. <laughs> Which one was it? Was uh, it like some billiards. It's like a long time ago. Okay. Okay. Like on a PC. Yeah. Early 90s. Too bad you scratch. No oh, way, oh, man. Oh, you got robbed. I suck at this today. Here. Thank you. Down the hatch, there's your cowboy cold shiner. Uh. Hey, scratch and a point. Uh.
It's a close one. <laughs> so you guys gonna watch the finals tomorrow? I just talked to my friend who's a Frenchman. Yeah. And uh, so apparently it's France versus Croatia. Yeah. I haven't ever watched a soccer game in my life. Even when I went to go see a soccer game, I didn't watch the game. <laughs> what did you do? I don't know. I have trouble focusing on that kind of thing. I've managed to watch a football games too, like American football. Yeah. Not that I'm into it, just that people were so into it, they like sat me down on the couch and like made me try to pay attention. Oh! Yeah. Scratch. It's a scratch game. This game is all about the scratch. One stripe left. Scratch strategy. I got uh, this. Is there a... Yeah. We'll take it with us. Okay. I'm just going to be a complete... Is there any rule about where I put it? No. No. Well, I mean, you have to keep it behind a line, but I don't care. Matter. No, no, no. Go for it. I thought there was something. I don't care. It's not like you're playing for money exactly. or anything. Unless you sell this documentary for a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah, Jackie Gleason is going to break your thumbs. <laughs> I mean, this corner pocket. <laughs> and the seven. Go, go. <laughs> so, what do you think is a better movie, The Hustler or The Color of Money? I guess I have to go with Color of Money because I never saw The Hustler. Me too. I've just seen They're both good, but I love The Color of Money. Yeah. Who's in The Hustler? Paul Newman, as a young guy. And oh, then he okay. comes back. It, the Color of Money is a sequel. Oh, I see. Oh, it's a sequel. sequel. I didn't even know that. Yeah. That's Tom Cruise, right? Yeah. And Forrest Whitaker. Is in the color of money? Yeah, young Forrest Whitaker's in that. He's fucking kick ass too, man. This one. So I'm gonna go, we're gonna try. What a shot, boy! Right on. Alright, black and down. Okay, Lebowski or Kingpin? <laughs> Lebowski or Kingpin? <laughs> Trick question, Lebowski is Kingpin. Oh, I, I did not know that. I've probably seen Lebowski maybe just twice. Really? Yeah, I've seen it. They're both like great. 20. I have Lebowski on DVD for some reason, Blu-ray, for some reason I don't have Kingpin. I also have the Yellow Draft House, pretty sure. Don't break this phone. I can't afford another <laughs> one right now. Oh. Yeah, when I shot the Gordon O'Reilly documentary, the, the, these Don't people kept there. trying to spit fake blood on my phone up. lens. Yeah. It did not work. I saw Ravencraft walked into that where they were splashing fake blood around everywhere, and he was wearing a completely white suit, and he walked away uns un unsplattered. What? He only had a What's few droplets on it. What project? The Gornor magazine uh, for our seventh anniversary party, they were throwing around a lot of fake blood and Saul Ravencraft walked in there with a complete white suit from head to toe and he, uh -huh. was, he wasn't he was barely touched. He only had a few droplets uh, stains on him. Meanwhile, I got completely yeah, yeah. slimed to the point that my clothes were destroyed. I had to get new so, shoes just to attend this do, event. Do the people who... Uh, like do role play up on Walnut Creek uh, on Sundays, and they also dress up in costumes. You know who I'm talking about? Where? It's like a group of people at Walnut Creek Metropolitan Park up north. They uh, dress up in medieval. Oh, uh, and they hit each other. Yeah. So they're either SCA, okay. which means they've got swords that are all balanced like they're real swords. Yeah. But they might look like duct tape, and they might be wearing fencing masks and that kind of thing, yeah. and padding and all this stuff. Yeah. 
or they're amped guard, and if they're amped guard, they're just foam swords, and they just beat the shit out of each other without without armor, because, you know, they're just lightweight. Uh, got it. I haven't paid, like, that much attention to how their sword looks, but it is one of those two. But they do dress <clears throat> up in, like, medieval clothing, and then try yeah. to, like, go at each other. Yeah, amped guard is all about, like, going berserk, and, um... SCA is more about like spending tons of time making your weapon like the right size, shape, and weight of a real weapon. Okay. And, and the SCA is about a lot more than just sword fighting. They're into recreation of everything. Like what does the SCA stand for? <clears throat> uh, Society for Creative Anachronism. Okay. <clears throat> so they get into costumes. Uh, that is, you know. Sure. Fashion of the Middle Ages and the Renaissance, and they get into uh, cooking and you know recipes, and okay. language, well, back in the day. and okay. all that cool. stuff. Yeah. Very cool. That's an excellent idea. Okay, we'll see you later. All right, where see are you, you off to? Great to meet you. She ain't telling. <laughs> oh, I got you set up, my friend. I don't know if this is gonna go in. Try. I don't have you set up well, but I do have you set up. Oh, that's it. Game that's it. Okay. and point. Yeah. Yeah. Show. Thank you. I'm I'm surprised I don't have all my balls on here still. <laughs> hey, you you got a great break, you know? You helped us both out. Okay. <laughs> So, do we play one more? No, we're, yeah. we're good. So I think the balls stay where they are, and we're oh, just okay. going to cover it. They just get them yeah. back down below, and we'll put yeah. the tarp back on. Yeah. Wait, am I in the right place? No, I'm up on some hill. The tall it's man is coming, and his balls are bigger than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Boy! Thank you guys.